Let's see if it works on David Barnson, who is also considering the new upbeat mood of this country, that we will be out and about and breaking out this weekend. What do you say? I think that I think that there is I think we're going to look at covid in the rear view mirror after this weekend. What say you? Well, I have been looking at it in the rearview mirror for quite some time, and so I certainly hope that the rest of the country is catching up. It is kind of sad how uh, divided that is, oftentimes by a political orientation, but certainly a cultural one. It's just sort of mystifying to see the level of people that are fully vaccinated, fully protected. And here, I'm at my house in East Hampton right now. I've been in the city all week in New York. And there's still so much mask wearing of people who don't need it. And you go to other spots and everyone's just really living a little more freely. And and I think it's somewhat sociological. But I'll tell you, Stuart, the place where I think you're going to see it coming back in droves or at the offices of our country, I think people are ready to go back to work. Mm. And I think that the companies are going to benefit immensely from a restored community collaboration and improving their own company culture by being back together in the office. Would you extend that to New York City? We've got tower blocks of office buildings all over the place here. At the moment, they're largely empty. You think they're coming back? They're going to be full anytime soon? I think they're going to be very close to full after Labor Day. I wish it were sooner. I've been pushing for this for almost a year now, as you know. My company has had both of its offices fully open for the whole time. But I see day by day as I walk through Midtown, more and more people are coming back. There's no question you see more people in suits and ties like myself walking around New York now. But we have a long way to go still. And I think that, unfortunately, the calendar has worked against us because then you get up to summer and so many people are used to not being in the city in the summer. But the J.P. Morgans and Goldman Sachs have been leaders here. They've been telling people to go back. The problems have been the law firms on 6th Avenue, my friend. Those are the people that have delayed going back. <laughs> uh, talking about us? OK, OK, OK. Real fast. Got to get to this. I know you like Exxon and Chevron. I know that you go for companies which pay a strong dividend and a growing dividend. Exxon, Chevron, they're going to pay a strong and growing dividend, are they? Well, for about 100 years, yes, sir. They did not cut their dividend uh, through COVID last year when oil prices went as low as they've gone forever. Exxon didn't cut its dividend during the Valdez uh, problem of, you know, what, 30 plus years ago. Um, So the concern is definitely not about their ability to maintain the dividend. They can control CapEx, how much they spend in capital expenditures up or down. uh, And they have such strong balance sheets that they've been able to protect their dividend. Um, when we, you look at what happened this week with Exxon losing a couple board seats, I think it's somewhat shocking that they were not able to protect them. But ultimately, what people seem to be misunderstanding, why Exxon's up almost 100% from its bottom late last year, why Chevron's up over 100%, is because earnings are what drive stock prices. And unless people think that the environmental extremists are right, that we actually don't need oil and gas anymore, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Exxon and Chevron are going to be producing and supplying a big portion of the oil and gas necessary to keep people living their lives. And so I think it's a great free cash flow generator, no matter what a couple loud people say on the sideline. (laughs) Okay. Hey, Barnson, you are all right. I've got a feeling you're going to have a great weekend, as are we all. See you, David. Thank you very much indeed, sir.